everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today I have a special video for you guys about how I make my liquid art, which takes about, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes per design tops using Procreate and then uploading it onto Print&Demand websites. And what I want to do for you guys today is like a full review of this thing, how to do it from start to finish. So I'll be taking you to, well, check out my iPad while I use Procreate to create liquid art, and then also take you to Art of Wear and Society 6 to upload these designs. Throughout this video, I'll also show you the sizes that I'm using. I will show you how I take a simple design and make it into a seamless pattern, whether it's using Canva or Clip Studio Paint, to upload it to Art of Wear or Society 6. You can also use this tutorial to basically upload to any other kind of print on demand platform like Redbubble or TeePublic, as well as upload it to your own Etsy store, Shopify store, WooCommerce store, whether it's integrated with Printify, Printful, Booten, or whatever print and demand supplier you guys are using. And I think I'm not going to talk that much, I'm just going to make myself smaller so we can get started with Procreate. And what I like to do when I'm working on these designs is try to think about the optimal file. And what I want to create is a file that's going to be either horizontally aligned or vertically aligned. And I was thinking about using the dimensions maybe 7500 by 6000 or 75 by 5000 and I eventually chose 75 by 6000 and this is a design that I'm also going to change so it's also going to have you know square alignment and not just the horizontal or vertical but for now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm trying to add layers which I can't because it's only one layer but don't worry one layer is all I need plus I can adapt the background color, if you guys want to work on these sizes with Procreate, and you do need another layer with a solid color. But I don't think I would need that for that, because what I'm doing with this one is I'm going to go to my inking tools, to the Sierra brush, which is one of my favorite brushes, because it has like this pressure sensitive, and it's really good if I just want to paint something, like draw something. And by painting a line and drawing in, like dragging in the specific color, I can basically change a mass amount of color and color a specific area and I like to combine my colors together. So in this case I was like taking a lot of dark blue and putting the lighter blue inside and taking the light blue putting the dark blue inside as well as adding some white to the mix and going with another sort of teal turquoise kind of color and adding other colors into the mix as well. By just tapping and holding in I can replicate the same color and just trying out new things and then clicking on my adjustment tools right down at the bottom to my liquify and liquify is pretty cool as you can see here now because liquify basically moves things around this is liquify on the push effect maximum size maximum distortion pressure and momentum and as you can see i'm just moving it around it's so easy and it's so so much fun I could just save this design, but I want to show you some other tricks that I can do with the liquify effect. So I'm just going to color everything with green and add some, you know, white in the mix. Just play around with colors. We have some bright green. I added some dark green. And then I thought, you know, I might as well just add black to the mix. And you can really do whatever you want to do with this. You just flow freely within the design. And I have several liquify elements like the twirl right the twirl left, the option to pinch a design, so it's kind of like squishing it in, and it's, it's kind of like drawing everything into that point. You can also expand a certain point to the outside, as well as crystallize, which creates mini, mini, mini micro push effects, and the edge option that sort of moves around and sharpens the edges of each color and of course the reconstruct where you could just play around with everything and just bring it back to normal i personally like the push better as much as the pinch sometimes seems like a nice idea and it could also be really good if you want to play around with text but pinching not really my thing i'm more of a push kind of girl i just like playing around i mostly just like swirling it <laughs> i don't know why i think i just like the whole swirl effect. But you know what? Let's just clear out this layer and make ourselves a new one. I do love a lot of combinations of black, white, and another color. So I'm going to do black, I'm going to do some green, 
I just like playing with black and pastels and I found that these are artworks that a lot of people also like. So I'm adding also some pastel, like very, very bright teal blue, as well as some maybe pink or purplish kind of thing. Just freely adding it around. I mean, obviously, first of all, this could be a really nice design. And you can also make a seamless pattern from what I'm doing now or so. This is art. A lot of people would review this as modern or abstract. But what I like to do is just play around with certain colors in the middle. Black, white, pastels. And then, of course, go to my liquify and have fun. And I like to think of myself as, you know, one, one down, one up, one up, and then one down in the middle. And then sort of repeat myself a lot of times to create like this sort of effect. And then to try and do the same thing from the sides, to like create like a checkered, like a, as if I was playing tic-tac-toe and like drawing the board of tic-tac-toe and like creating that kind of effect. There is really no limit to how much you can play around with it. And, you know, at some point you just play around with it enough and you go like, yes, I'm done now. But sometimes I just like to play around with it. This is a part of my art therapy. I could just watch Netflix and just do like that endlessly. It is rather relaxing, but we're not here to just relax. We're also here to learn. So you know what? I'm just going to do whatever I want to do for the next few segments of the tutorial by just playing around with pink. So I wanted to do pink and then a darker shade of pink and then a darker, sort of like the scale between pink and like eggplant pink purple. And then I'm also adding a little bit spaces with the black and I have the white gaps. So it's going to be a really nice sort of color contrast design. And then of course my liquify effect and twirl things around until I feel I, like I'm done. And then I start just expanding my push element to the corners. Obviously you can play with it more than I did, but I kind of like it. What I did at this point during the tutorial while filming the iPad was actually to get up and to get my computer so I can airdrop this design into my computer by clicking on the, the actions, the share, and exporting this by airdrop to my Mac as a JPEG file. The thing is, I really liked what I came up with and I didn't want to start again. So I clicked on the adjustments and hue saturation and brightness for the layer and you can just move it around and it's a different file. So I airdropped that as well and then return back to the original pink one, clicking on the hue again, and made another adjustment, this time to the red color, and another adjustment into the green color, and exported all of them into my computer. As you can see, I've been working on some various types of liquid art in various types of colors, but what I wanna do right now is to stop showing you that and take you to Art of Wear because that's gonna be the first platform that I'm gonna upload this to. And Art of Wear has had a full video in this channel. I will leave a link to that down below. They also have Christmas stockings now. I am obsessed with their scarves. And yes, I have an order from Art of Wear coming my way. And of course, I'll update you as soon as the products arrive. They have a variety of products from home decor to scarves to different types of apparel as well as bags and a really nice design lab where you can basically choose from a really big pro product list. I mean, they have some really unique stuff, but one of my favorite items in their store is actually the pencil case. And one of the reasons why I like their pencil case is because you get to design both sides. So it's really kind of unique. And the way you design it is by uploading a photo. So I'm gonna choose the green photo. And whenever you upload it, it's gonna stretch till the whole thing, which in this case is big enough since, you know, I made a really, really huge 7,000 by 7,000 file, 7,500 by 6,000, sorry. And I'm just gonna adjust it wherever I see fit on top of the pencil case. And for the back, I can choose the same type of file or upload a different one. In this case, the pink one which I thought it's going to be kind of cute to upload the pink one. So technically one side of the pencil case is going to be green and the other side is going to be this purplish pinkish kind of thing, which I thought could be kind of nice. So it's kind of a unique pencil case, which is why I like art of wear. One of the reasons, one of the many, many reasons. And we also have their scarves, which I am obsessed with. But the problems with their scarves, and if I'm looking at this one, is that I have to upload a really, really big file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Canva and actually make a seamless pattern from this liquid art. And I've done it a million times, like explain this process. So let's just quickly run through it, dropping off all of my options for this 
like everything I just did on the Procreate and then going into my elements to grid, choosing a two by two, minimizing the spacing, going back to my uploads, choosing one of these. Let's go with the pink. Now the first one to the left is my anchor point. The second one gets flipped horizontally, the third vertically, and the last one in both ways. And then you just download it. Voila, seamless pattern. And now I'm just gonna upload my new seamless pattern onto Art of Wear. And of course, again, this is a 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. It's not enough to fill in the scarf. But with the Art of Wear duplicate tool, I can basically cover the entire scarf with this 5,000 by 5,000 pixel design. I sometimes also like to adjust it a little bit up, like to make it asymmetric in a way. And I do love the result, I have to tell you guys. And of course, you can be doing this with bags. You can be doing you can actually just upload this as wall art because, you know, Art of Wear also just has normal wall art and various, various sizes. They also have the notebook and the spiral notebook. They have stationary cards, actual fabrics, and a lot of home decor items like different types of pillow, pillow sleeves, duvet covers, and a lot of clothing items that are quite interesting. I mean, they have kimonos and like wrap and like so many skirt wraps and pageantiers and I was thinking for this one let's go maybe with the draped kimono and show you basically the same thing with this one and as you can see the parts of the scarf remained and now all I have to do is just duplicate the rest I'm just basically duplicating this seamless pattern and snapping it into place to cover the entire surface of the actual design and of course then I'm gonna go to the back side of the kimono of the draped kimono and design it as well by minimizing my design until the layer DPI is good and duplicating it multiple, multiple times so that I can basically cover the back. And the end result, the product really does look amazing. It's one of my favorite platforms in terms of the design options, uh, especially with the 3D ghost modeling that I really, really love. But I also love Society6, and Society6 feels more artist-oriented to me, and I've been uploading a lot of these designs myself to my own Society6 shop that I just revamped. Like, I've had this shop, I think, since 2016-17, but it was totally different things. And now, it's, I'm mostly trying to upload these kind of designs, but the thing with Society6 is that you have to upload insanely huge art. So what I like to do is, first of all, I'm going to choose one of the files and upload them, and this is a vertically aligned design. Now, once it's finished uploading, I'm actually going to open this design and rotate it manually to become a horizontally aligned design and upload that design to Society6 as well. In my next step, I'm going to go to Clip Studio Paint because Society6 has a lot of products that are 10,000 pixels in one of their requirements, even 10,200. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an 11,000 by 11,000 size file and basically do the same thing I did with Canva just on Clip Studio Paint because Canva cannot manufacture me like files that are just that big. So what I'm basically doing is I'm copying the design onto this size, duplicating my layer, moving my layer to the side, and this takes a lot of adjustments at times. I mean, I have to really play around with it. It doesn't snap into position like Art of Wear and I don't have the grids of Canva. But once I'm getting it close enough, of course, using a background color to help me out, once I'm getting it close enough to the side, I only have to flip this horizontally, merge those two layers together, create another layer, duplicate basically both of these, place it at the bottom, flip it vertically, and then I'm left with a seamless pattern as well. Only that this seamless pattern is a JPEG file of 11,000 by 11,000 pixels. And as you can see, it's not really centered, but I don't mind, I really like the layout of it and what I'm gonna do with that design after checking that it's actually, like I didn't miss any part of the line, is upload that one as well to Society6. And then I like to think about names for my designs, even though they're all abstract and liquid art, I like to think about it's liquid, it's like earth colors. So this is the liquid earth to me. Uh, I have the right to use them. This is not mature content and waiting for everything to upload. Now the system is going to think which one of the three files is the best for each item. And as you can see, like some of them have the horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment, 
but the initial product, the Frame Mini Art Print, had the square alignment, which I didn't really like. So all you have to do is to go into the product and choose the alignment that you do want for that specific product. Check out that it looks nice in the mock-up and that the placement is good. Save and enable. Now it's going to ask you if you want to activate it on similar other products, which I chose in this case to do, and just go in and browse through the products. There are so many amazing products with Society6, and they actually added several more products to their mist. Like, I, I seen the placements that they have, the table placements for dinner, which is quite of a nice touch. They're really into hardcore home decor and fabrics. And they have these insane sizes for canvases, and they really do use a minimum of 300 dpi for printing their canvases. That's why their art prints and posters are in such good quality, which, by the way, they were the stars of yesterday's video. I mean, Society6 truly started in the video of yesterday, which was showing you the actual quality of print-on-demand wall art. So you can go ahead and check it out. I will leave a link to that video down below. But moving on with uploading so many products onto Society6, I do have to show you, first of all, that I'm able to upload this as a blackout curtain, as a sheer curtain, because it's a very big file. 11,000 by 11,000 pretty much covers everything you need to do on Society6. That size would basically cover every single product, so you can activate every single product. And what you can see here is a jigsaw puzzle! Society6 started with a jigsaw puzzle, which yes, I woke up this morning to film this video and I purchased a jigsaw puzzle and a bunch of other stuff from Society6, so there is another Society6 review coming up. Well, whenever they're gonna ship it to me. <laughs> Because, you know, I have the jigsaw puzzle, and I think I ordered, like, pillowcases, and now I'm just going to go over the different types of products to see that I activated everything. I also ordered a notebook, which was also a nice touch. Most of them have, again, that liquid art effect, and I just can't wait for it to come. I think a liquid art jigsaw puzzle is kind of nice, and having seen this, plus the fact that they do have... A normal shipping rate to their puzzles to Bulgaria really made me happy because for my own jigsaw puzzle project, what was holding me back is finding that one print on demand puzzle supplier that has a good puzzle and a good price with normal shipping rate. So I'm extremely ecstatic about Society6 making these puzzles. And of course, once you're done, all you have to do is give tags to the name. Again, this is not an upload to Society6 tutorial. There was an upload to Society6 tutorial comparing it to Redbubble previously in this channel. If you want me to make a relatively newer version of a Society6 upload tutorial, please let me know in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to do it. There are so many more products than the last time. And as you can see in my store, I am obsessed with these designs. I mean, I do so much of them. Yes, I have very, like I have other designs, very little. But I'm mostly into this whole acrylic pouring and color mixing. And I, I really do think that this is a part of me that found like a really relatively easy to make art. I mean, people look at it and go like, oh my god, this is insane. Well, it's two minutes <laughs> to make this. All you have to do is have Procreate or any other software where you can liquefy things and then you're good to go. And I'm looking at it and I'm loving it. These acrylic pouring really do look good on pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. And with that bit of info, let's make me bigger again. So we can summarize this video. And this, I hope that you did like this technique. I mean, whether you have Procreate or you don't have Procreate or you can do it with the Photoshop or you just learned that, hey, Society6 has jigsaw puzzles. And if you did like this video, I would appreciate if you physically like it on YouTube because every time you hit that like button, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video. I'm going to show it to more people. And subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. I will be seeing you guys again tomorrow for a shop review video. And I'm not sure which shop I'm going to choose, whether it's going to be Redbubble, Society6, Etsy. I tend to do a lot of shopping during shop reviews in the past few months, so who knows. And you can still participate in tomorrow's shop review video or in the next ones because we're having one every single Friday by scrolling down in the description and finding a Google form link down below where you can go in and anonymously submit your shops. They could be Etsy, Society6, Shopify, stores with Printify, with Printful, with Guten, your own Payhip stores, your Redbubble, T-Chip, T-Publix, Teespring, wherever it is that you're selling your print-on-demand or printable items. 
and tomorrow I'll also talk to you guys about what we have in store for us next week. I can tell you that next week on Wednesday for the product review part of this YouTube schedule, I am going to show you a hoodie from Society6 as well as a, another hoodie from Printful and a sweatshirt from Printful and comparing the quality between a hoodie from Society6 and a hoodie from Printful. I don't know if you can guess which one is going to be better in your opinion. And also on Monday, I'm not really sure what the video topic is going to be about, but I am sure that five of you guys are going to get my new font for free. All you have to do is go into my video of one by one ratio wall art for Etsy. There is a link to that down below and watch the end part of it as I ask you a question and all you have to do is comment that question to that video and you're on your way to be in the raffle to get the free font on Monday. And that was it from me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, Procreate Art of Wear Society 6 Canva Clip Studio Paint Tutorial. And as usual, I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next video. Bye!